Our eyes are like windows, catching the reflections off of all the objects we're surrounded by. Sometimes I catch myself looking off into the unknown, off the sides of roads. Sometimes if you just get a little closer to the ground and get a view like the same view when you were just a little kid, you see so many things that you haven't found the time to appreciate. Whole worlds, totally separate and different from the one we live in. Sometimes I catch myself looking up into the trees and the canopy. I've spent a lot of time in the tree canopy. There's so many unique and interesting things that we just don't notice on the day to day. So fast, there it is, okay. Something as small as a gnat commands the respect of a wasp. That's because it is a wasp, it's a twig wasp. This wasp lives in any environment. It's managed to survive and thrive through all circumstances. It can live in your cities or in your forest. This little wasp has found a way to adapt, thrive, and survive through all circumstances. I'm Alex, I'm the host of The Great Outdoors. Inside of this capsule, I have a very small wasp species. In fact, it's one of the most common wasp species that you may encounter in the great outdoors. It is known as the elongated twig ant. Now, the reason I want to get stung by the elongated twig ant, it is actually a wasp and not an ant. And it resembles a wasp as far as its segments and its body goes. The reason I want to get stung by the elongated twig ant is because I feel like it's often overlooked as one of the culprits for many stings that just pop up and people never saw the culprit. Now, the elongated twig ant does actually have a pretty powerful sting for the size of this wasp. In fact, it's pretty comparable to the trap jaw ant, which today I will get stung by the elongated twig ant just to show the prolonged effects and show that they're harmless. And if you ever get stung randomly and don't know what it was, and you're in Florida or really anywhere in the North American continent, there's ants similar to this. If not the elongated twig ant, you may have the slender twig ant or the Mexican twig ant. We call them trap ants because they get stuck under your shirt and then they sting you repetitively and they just sting and sting and sting. So unlike the honeybee and like a true wasp, this twig ant can sting multiple times. And this was it's from a trap ant. just a regular old trap ant. Yeah. Isn't that crazy? Now, these are also and I haven't even touched it. I haven't scratched it at all. It's crazy that such a small insect can create such a wealth. You would never think. It just goes to show you. And that's a scar I got when I was a little kid. Oh, is it? Yeah, okay. my mom, I was helping her do the laundry and cut out the washing machine. And cut yourself wide open? Yeah, the tin cut me wide open. Man. But did you cry? Like a baby. Okay. Which, uh is obviously a problem if you have one trapped in your shirt. Now, I will go ahead and pull this small but ooh, very quick insect out of the capsule, and we will induce a sting so we can see just how painful the sting of the elongated twig ant actually is. Now, it is very similar in appearance to the trap jaw ant. However, it does not have that um, trap jaws, which trap jaw ants have the second fastest moving appendages of any animal in the insect kingdom or animal kingdom the other one is also from an ant so let's induce the sting real quick before i miss my opportunity there it is oh wow it's already stinging me okay yep it's definitely noticeable um i'm not gonna say it's severe or anything um, let me try to get that on camera a little bit better uh it's it's not stuck but yeah it's starting to feel a good little burn um let me get stung again so i can show the effects now it will whelp up and uh, a buddy of mine just got stung today, which is why I said, you know, these common insects are the ones that I really should be focused on. Ah, yeah, that's been kidding. It's stuck. It's stuck. Oh, it was stuck for just a second there. I'm going to let it go so it can be free and reproduce. And that has a good little burn to it for an insect so small. Um, it certainly is noticeable. It's not something that you're just going to overlook. Um, but it was important for me because I wanted to show that in relation to other larger wasp species and show you why size does not always matter when you're dealing with stinging insects per se even scorpions we know that's true that the bigger scorpions don't always pack the worst punch now there isn't any swelling yet 
but uh, I can feel the tingle and it's it's noticeable. It's nowhere near like a honeybee per se, but it's really remarkable just how bad that actually can swell. Um, we'll just wait a few minutes and we'll see how bad the swelling actually is on this elongated twig ant actually are and I'll share it with y'all. The elongated twig ant or Pseudonumerix gracilis is a large slender species native to Mexico and arid parts of the U.S. The workers are 7 to 12 millimeters in length, generally wasp-like in appearance. They often are found on vegetation, that's why we call them oak ants in our home state. Foraging for live insects, collecting honeydew and sap sucking insects. The most interesting fact I found about the elongated twig ant is that if the colony ever finds themselves without a queen, the worker ants form dominance hierarchies by boxing with their antennae. This leads to a couple of high ranking individuals to lay eggs until their true queen returns. And that literally is all that is published on the elongated twig ant. God dang, I never thought that it was going to swell up as bad as it did already. Uh, that's pretty impressive for a five minute checkup on that swelling site. Uh, yeah, I'd say that's impressive. And it's a persistent burn too. For such a small wasp species to see that kind of reaction. There's actually three good sites there. There's one up high in the middle right there and then the two down below. But yeah, I mean for such a small wasp, that's, uh, that's pretty impressive I gotta say. That definitely is up there with the trap jaw ant, if not greater than trap jaw ant. I mean, for such a small wasp, now it's been about 10 minutes. Look at that swelling. I mean, that's certainly remarkable. And uh, something that you would want to avoid. It's not like you just want to do this for fun, like I'm doing. Thank you very much for supporting me and my channel and our journey to find the worst stinging insect in the Southeast.